So, a uh, quick video uh, show you how to interface a servo with Flight Simulator. What I'm going to use this for is my slip skid indicators for the Learjet. Something I've been badly missing since I uh, since I built the the sim pit. It's an instrument I basically lived by for a long time. Um, is anyone pretty much who uh, has done any training or dug into aviation, stepping on the ball and doing coordinating turns is, is pretty important. And uh, with my Lear pit, I don't have that instrument anymore, so I need one. Anyway, um, here's how I did it. It's super simple. This is the UNO because my, uh, my other board my, uh, for the uh, cabin pressure I need to redo it. I have enough inputs left, but uh, I have to move some stuff around. Anyway, uh, really easy. I've got the the servo uh, out pin and just power and ground. And uh, there is a micro, uh, just one of the cheap hobby servos, tiny, tiny, plenty good enough to run the turn coordinator. Um, I'll unpause the sim here. I think we're still hooked up and working. And that's in relation to the slip skid indicator. And uh, if I can catch FSX, get it in focus. You can hear the servo maybe in time with the ball. So that's it. I'll show you the programming, how it's done. It's really, really easy. And uh, then all I have to do is actually build, 3D print the enclosure and uh, hook this servo up. What I'm planning on doing is uh, just doing the enclosure and some vinyl tubing in the ball. And what I'll do probably is uh, hook, put the servo off to the one side, hook uh, a linkage, probably uh, a string or um, fishing line to the ball on one side and the other side of the ball will be anchored with a rubber band or a spring so that uh, as we move it it will be a nice smooth linear motion and it will retract going both ways. The alternative I may put a magnet right on the servo horn and do a metal ball in the tube and then uh, use the magnet to drag the ball back and forth in the tube. Either way, uh, lots of ways to do it. Anyway, I'll show you the coat. So quickly we'll take a spin through how to set this up. Uh, this is the Link 2 FS program. What I've done is uh, in the extractions menu, you just tell it to send out the turn coordination ball. It's just that easy. It's going to come out as uh, less than capital N and then the data. And uh, as usual, you can set up other stuff in here. Um, I'll show this so I don't have to pan back. Normal cycle time on these is 200 milliseconds. Uh, for a servo, I found you need to drop that down, otherwise uh, at 200 milliseconds you get jumps in the servo. So this is going to take up a, a little bit of bandwidth on uh, on your PC. But uh, anyway, um, this is the uh, Arduino sketch. It's uh, just a um, uh, slight modification on the Link2FS uh, example code. So uh, include Ver speed servo. That's a variable speed servo library I found online. You can download it uh, free. Um, looks like I've included it twice for some reason. That's weird. Huh. Get rid of that. Anyway, uh, define the my servo. And this is all the code from Jim's example strat sketch. In the void setup, all you do is tell it on pin 9 that's going to be my servo and then you start the serial and this is all the example sketch where it checks the serial data, gets the code, blah blah blah. Um, these don't, don't do anything so I could actually delete all those because I'm not using them. Uh, actually, sorry, these ones are doing nothing. Here's the void less than, I'll put it at the top. First identifier was a less than, case is n, that's what we're interested in get the characters. Uh, it's three characters long, so I just commented these ones out. Uh, this is where we convert it to an integer. And then uh, what I've done is defined VAL for the value is equal to the value that's coming in, the integer. 
val I take and I map it so I map val 0 to 256 this is the scale coming from FSX then you tell it your scale for your servo 0 to 179 degrees it's just that easy from there it'll know this is now linked together and I just tell it to turn the servo so my servo slow move this is part of that variable speed and the value uh, which is up here so it's going to move at a speed of 45 the speed can be set from 0 to 255 and I set it at 45 um, this is not necessary what you you can just use a normal servo library and you don't need speeds and fancy stuff but I've decided to uh, put the speed in there so that I can use it as a buffer if I need to for choppy servo activation in case I need to slow down this network polling rate a bit and then it becomes choppy because you're only getting a new update every however many milliseconds so uh, if if I have to back that down to 200 it's quite choppy so what I do is I slow the servo down and yes it's not exactly matched to F6 then but uh, it's plenty better than nothing and then all you do what I've done here is a serial print line this was for my own troubleshooting to make sure that the VAL was actually updating correctly and uh, uh, you don't need that that's it that's all there is to it the rest of this code isn't used so basically the entire code to make the servo work other than your definitions is right here and uh, done deal so and you saw it working in the beginning uh, now I just have to build the enclosure for the uh, for the ball and uh, this code will work for any signal coming out of link to FS link to FS if you wanted to do flaps gauge angle of attack gauge uh, fuel gauge you, you name it a anything you could map it to a servo and then define what your upper and lower limits are and how far you want the servo to move and uh, there you go. It, it's you can just tweak these values if you already had a gauge and uh, you didn't want it overshooting the top. You can back it down. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.